Good morning, okay. everyone. Uh, we apologize. Here we go. Good morning. We apologize for uh, the technical difficulties that we have been experiencing this morning, um, but we are hoping to get this started here in just a moment. Um, Mike, I'm going to hand this over to you for a quick second um, and make you okay. the presenter so that we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. All right, fantastic. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. And again, we're sorry for the, the uh, delay. As, as usual, there's always... Uh, uh tech issues that come into play we thought we had it figured out but uh now it looks like we absolutely do so uh, so without further ado uh i'm just going to go ahead and uh and go ahead and get started here and uh i'm going to ask uh my friend courtney and uh and mike at uh at american independent marketing to uh go ahead and uh handle the slides here but uh let's go ahead and get started so my name is mike simonstad i am your long-term care rep with national guardian life and today we're going to talk a little bit about selling uh long-term care and having the discussion uh about long-term care planning to a younger uh and healthier audience and listen uh i know uh that's tough to speak to you know younger people uh, about an issue such as this that is, uh, you know, very much perceived as uh, old person's insurance, right? And that's, uh, you know, something that I think is an industry we're trying to uh, overcome. But listen, the goal here in the next 40 minutes uh, is to, you know, give you ideas and language to speak uh, to the age, uh, you know, 45 to 55 market. And from that, you know, develop a repeatable framework uh, in which, uh, you know, that will allow you to succeed with this market. So if we can go to the next slide here, um, uh, that would be great. So a good place to start, right, is to uh, review the definition of long-term care insurance, right? Uh, and, you know, here's the definition of long-term care, right? It's uh, uh, every day, either hands-on or standby assistance, with your everyday everyday activities of daily living, whether those uh, uh, activities and that assistance is in your own residence or uh, a number of facilities, such as adult daycare, assisted living, uh, adult family homes, residential care facilities, or nursing homes. And when it comes to long-term care, benefits are payable, right? Uh, when your physician certifies that you need uh, assistance with two of the six activities of daily living, or uh, you're diagnosed with a cognitive impairment and need supervision. What's very notable about this definition of long-term care insurance is what is not there, right? Uh, which is age, right? There's nothing about age in here. Um, and there's nothing about the reason for the ADL loss, all right? So that's what's key. The, additionally, I, I'll go further and say there's nothing uh, about uh, venue on here other than uh, uh, list the uh, venues and with the big one being your own residence, right? So uh, why has uh, the message always been about uh, old people and the grim reapers, so to speak. So if we can go to the next slide, let's take a look at uh, what I will call the, the old message uh, with long-term care uh, has been, right? And, you know, like many of you out there, I've been in long-term care you know, pretty much my whole career since 1990. And I remember in the, uh, you know, in those early days, there were many carriers out there in which the imaging, all you had to do is look at the uh, the brochure for many carriers out there. I could, I'll remember Life Investors out there for those of you who've been around. You look at the brochure. I remember this uh, uh, vividly. The brochure, the uh, client brochure, had photos of people in nursing homes on it, right? People in wheelchairs, right? That was uh, what carriers relied on. It was almost like they went ahead and purposely uh, the carriers were uh, positioning this insurance as uh, 
as you know it's old people's insurance for uh, uh for people planning to go in nursing homes right it was actually kind of de depressing um and now i think the carrier uh, the carriers the industry have done has, has done a better job uh out here but still i do see a lot of high pressure sales tactics uh that really do uh it really does turn off a lot of younger and healthier people, especially uh, when the messaging relies on the cost of nursing homes, which, uh, you know, it, in my mind generates a lot of, a lot of fear, right? Um, you know, uh, now the imaging on the brochures is better, right? It's uh, now it's usually, it's usually the, with all the carriers, it seems like the same uh, couple, is on all the brochures now rather than in a nursing home uh they're either frolicking on a beach or they're backpacking or biking or something like that you know it still looks like they're in their you know you know early mid 60s maybe but what's front and center with a lot of the marketing out there is hey what is the cost of nursing home care in your area right and you know listen there's nothing wrong we all use cost of care studies um, I personally look right off the bat and see what the cost of home care services uh, is in an area, right? What the median cost of that is. But not only do, do I, you know, when I when I speak to, you know, agents and advisors out there, um, I always, uh, even when it comes to plan design, you know, I all, you know, a lot of people look and the messaging is, we need to look at the cost of nursing home care uh, in your area. And, you know, after a while, I'm like, why? To shock people? Uh, in my experience, it's not very helpful, right, to, uh, to depend on the cost of nursing homes uh, and generate fear. In, in my experience, um, you know, it, it's do done a lot more harm than good. Um, you know, not to knock, you know, the uh, cost of care studies that are out there because, you know, they're useful. It's useful data. But relying on it for sales, in my mind, is a little bit outdated, right? And if we can go to the next slide, that is why if you go out on the street today and you ask someone, right, uh, what do you, when you hear the word or the term long-term care, what are the first images you see, right? What comes to mind? Uh, and again, most people, when you go out there, uh, people will say, well, it's, you know, all about nursing home care, right? It's all, you know, what comes to mind, um, you know, old people's insurance, right? So because that's what comes to mind, I don't want to talk about it, right? I'm not old, right? I'm, you know, 47. I'm not even 50 yet. Um, so I'm going to avoid this discussion, this discussion until I'm old, you know? And guess what happens when you keep avoiding, and we know this all too well, right? Um, you know, listen, you, you know, you, you can get in a boxing ring with father time and mother nature. You're never going to win. Right. Uh, because as you age, long term care is tougher to get because it's your health that buys long term care. Right. Um, then, obviously, as we all know, the longer you wait, the more expensive uh, and unaffordable it can be. Right. Um, so, and we're going to drill down into that in a little bit, but I see it every day, right? People, you know, automatically think this as, as old people's insurance, thus they don't really, you know, uh, look into it until they're old. It's almost like a, you know, rite of passage, uh, they seem to think, all right, well, I'm old, so I'm going to look into nursing home care, nursing home insurance. And I see it, you know, for those of you that, you know, uh, purchase leads, uh, and receive leads. I used to work for a carrier, um, you know, for about 17 years. I was a long-term care uh, consultant for the carrier that receives AARP leads, and I would hear it every day from new, uh, you know, the agents for that carrier. Um, that boy, so many of these leads are older people with health issues. I mean, you know, 70, age 75 plus. That seems to be. Uh, you know, when people are really thinking about this and really uh, interested about this. So, you know, we as an industry and as uh, producers out there need to flip that. So if we can go to the uh, next slide, here is uh, kind of a, a school of thought on how to have this discussion and position 
the long-term care discussion uh, as something that is uh, truly valuable and uh, in many cases necessary for the younger market, right? And number one, it comes down to this, um, that uh, we need to make the connection that needing long-term care, right, is an event, you know, similar to disability, uh, having a, a, you know, a disability occurrence, right? Now, that event usually is unexpected, right? So, uh, it could be permanent or it could be something that is totally recoverable. And it has nothing to do with age, right? It has more to do with that unexpected injury or, or illness. And then if we look, you know, at the, you know, go back to the definition, you know, refer back with the client to the definition of long-term care, um, and what long-term care insurance is, and especially the benefit trigger, right? People will start to make uh, that connection that, uh, you know, this is not a rite of passage for, uh, for older people, right? Uh, what this is, is putting the plan together in case of, uh, you know, in case I need unexpectedly need assistance with my daily uh, functionality. Right, because in this great country of ours, in uh, in the United States of America, when it comes to custodial care and needing assistance with your everyday activities for whatever reason, uh, we're on our own, right? Uh, you know, the, uh, there's no, you know, Medicare doesn't pay, Medicaid will pay for nursing home care, uh, but even there, the copay is going to be 100%. So, you know, we're on our own when it comes to this and, um, you know, positioning this whole thing as an unexpected event that could happen at any time, people can relate to it. And I will tell you, I'm sure many of you out there uh, know someone who unexpectedly needed long-term care services. And this is actually uh, quite remarkable that, you know, I'm speaking about this topic today because just last week, um, a longtime agent for the previous company I was with um, uh, filed uh, a long-term care. It may have been two weeks ago, uh, but he filed, uh, and he's a relatively young guy, filed a long-term care claim. Um, now, this is a, you know, a leading agent, at an insurance carrier who, you know, about 10 years ago when he was in his mid-40s, um, said, hey, listen, if I'm going to talk to the talk to talk about long term care planning, I'm going to walk the walk and I'm going to buy my own plan as well for my wife and I. So he's, uh, I remember when he did it, right? He said, oh, it'll probably won't be likely that I'll need it, but hey, you know, I'm in good health right now. Now's the time to do it. So he has a, a long term care policy uh, that he bought in his mid 40s. Um, and of course, like most people, when they buy their policy uh, early in life, they, they love to brag about how little premium they pay. And uh, every time I hear from him, he says, yep, uh, I don't mind paying that uh, premium now. But fast forward uh, from, you know, 10 years ago to about two weeks ago. And this is a big guy, right? He's like seven foot one. Um, he's actually the cousin of a leading NFL coach. Uh, but he is a big, big guy. And about two weeks ago, he slipped on uh, the ice here in uh, here in uh, the Philadelphia area, and he had he broke his pelvis, some ribs, and his shoulder. And this is a big guy, and him uh, falling on the ice is essentially you know uh, timber. He went down hard apparently, and, you know, and and um, you know he's going to recover. But boy, at this time, uh, this is a guy who has three boys, right? One's in college. The other two are in high school. He was uh, actually rushing to his son's basketball game uh, when he slipped on the ice. Uh, and his wife, uh, well, you know, this uh, this guy, Ed, is about you know, he's like seven feet tall. His wife is, you know, a little, uh, very small, and she keeps the whole family together. Now, Ed uh, has a broken ribs, uh, broken pelvis, broken shoulder, he needs assistance with everything, right? His wife, on top of working full time and, you know, keeping, you know, the family of four males, you know, going, uh, you know, she can't take care of him and help him with, with absolutely everything. Um, so this policy uh, he has uh, is uh, going to help him and it, it, it's 
Kristen, especially, I'm sure, as she can see, uh, a godsend. So I'm sure everyone has a story about someone who's needed long-term care earlier than later, and that's mine. It's just remarkable it happened when I'm talking about this, uh, this subject. Um, if we can go to the next slide, I'm going to share with you some uh, verbiage, right, terminology uh, that can help you, right, when, you, when you're talking about, and listen, uh, we're all long-term care professionals, and we all find ourselves talking, you know, the same lingo, right, same language, uh, especially when it comes to words, because words can help or harm you when it comes to, you know, sales and getting your point across to your clients. So, um, here are some uh, here are, here is some verbiage, proven phrases that I think can help you and help set the tone, uh, and will go a long way in uh, getting younger people to understand that this is not nursing home insurance. Like it, it still baffles me that a lot of people do call this nursing home insurance, and no, right? It's not. It is actually stay-at-home insurance, is what it is. And my friend Ed, who's currently on claim right now, he'll recover eventually, of course. But, you know, it's stay-at-home insurance. It's allowing, it's giving him a third-party checkbook and the resources to stay at home and receive the care he needs. And that's what we need to talk about. We should not, never talk this, never talk about nursing home insurance. It is stay-at-home insurance. Additionally, a lot of people out there automatically uh, think that, well, you know, uh, you know, the image of nursing homes and, and doctors, you know, this is, uh, you know, it's a, when you come down to it, it's medical care. No, it's not. We need to educate people on what custodial care is, right? Every day, hands-on or standby assistance with your activities and your functionality is what custodial care is about. And that's what we're talking about here. Furthermore, custodial care is not covered uh, with uh, most of our health insurance and other uh, other programs such as Medicare, so we need to uh, you know start educating people on custodial care and use that term. Uh, and again, you know the the imaging and talking and the the one the one uh, term that does particularly drives me nuts is becoming frail. Right? Uh, well, you know we're all going to become old and sick and frail, uh, so you need to have a, a plan in place to deal with that you know what, why don't you just say, you know, your health becoming compromised, right? It's the same thing without the imagery, right? Your health becomes compromised, thus you need assistance. Um, additionally, I do think the term, you know, caregiver, caretaker, it, uh, you know, it generates an image of, you know, someone, uh, you know, being a, being a caretaker for an older person. So I think a better, you know, a, a better term could be care supervisor or, uh, you know, an attendant or a, a, a care manager or advocate. I think that's a better term. And then here's another one that we always uh, do, especially when it comes to plan design. Um, and, uh, you know, quick plug if for those that ever need help or assistance with plan design. Uh, number one, I know uh, Mike Anderson's team at AIM can help, but I can help as well, of course. And I'll give you my contact info at the end of this. But, you know, when, when doing this and saying, well, you know what, the cost, and this, again, it comes back to the, uh, you know, the, the cost of care for nursing homes, uh, you know, or the, you know, the nursing home cost of care, you know, what, uh, you know, rather than saying something is better than nothing, you know, which, you know, has a degree of negativity to it, you know, a little goes a long way, which is true, right? Uh, a little, even, you know. $2,500, $3,000 a month from a third-party checkbook, my God, that can go a long way in helping the family and maybe just what's needed to keep someone out of a facility. So rather than saying something is better than nothing, a little goes a long way, I think, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is a more positive way to say the same thing. Then, of course, you know, uh, you know address the risk. We need to address the risk of uh, needing long-term care. Well, what we're doing really is alleviating the consequences, right? We all know what the risk is. And if you go to the next slide, please, uh, we will see uh, the the one statistic that we've all seen, right? Everyone's seeing we could debate this uh, forever, right? People age 65 and older have a 70% chance of needing long-term care services uh, at some point in the future, right? And, you know, um, 
you know, a lot of people, you know, consider that, well, it's a fact, you know, I do want to mention, it. I get that. And then some other people say, yeah, well, that's kind of high pressure. Um, well, I, I can see that too. So I think what's important uh, in either way, I, I understand, but, you know, and that is a fact, right? From, uh, you know, people age 65 have a 70% chance of needing long-term care going forward. But from what I see from this statistic, it's the story behind it. And behind that, uh, I believe, is uh, about chronic conditions, right? Um, so chronic conditions really do set in, right? Again, like I said earlier, you're, you're never going to beat Mother Nature and Father Time. And, father, and uh, the chronic conditions do start piling up as you age. In fact, um, I would like to see more statistics rather than this. Uh, and I looked this up uh, the other day. Uh, those in America, those people ages 55 to 64, 60 uh, in that age bracket, 55 to 64, 68% of males and 70% of females have at least one chronic condition that they're working with, right? Now, you know, something, uh, you know, a health issue that's not, you know, not necessarily is going to, um, you know, be deadly for them. But, you know, when, when you start, uh, you know, when you get old and, you know, you have, you know, two, three, four, when the chronic conditions start piling up, well, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that becomes an issue. So, uh, and when that happens, I think the, the gist of it is you better get this stuff before you're 65. Uh, I don't understand, you know, I, when, when, you know, you look at the statistic, oh, okay, great. Well, I'll wait till age 65 to buy because that makes sense. That's when uh, I'm really probably going to need it. That's what I should, well, no. Um, you know, even when you turn age 55, it's likely you're going to have, uh, at least one chronic condition going for you. So what we need to do, and if you can go to the next slide, what we need to do and the, what the message needs to be is you have to maximize your health currency, right? Um, that's what it's all about, right? Maximize. Now, when it comes, like I said earlier, when it comes to long-term care, it's your good health that buys a long-term care policy, right? Money just pays the premium. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we're all just one doctor's visit away from becoming uninsurable. And when you're uninsurable, um, or your health currency is weak, um, you know what, all of a sudden, now, uh, forget about sticker shock, you'll pay anything to obtain long term care insurance, because you're you're desperate for it. And that's, the key is to get to people and get them to understand that as time goes on, um, you know, it's very likely um, you're not going to be able to get this, right? Um, I wanted to share something with you, which, which, uh, which is, you know, again, uh, pretty astonishing. Uh, and I've been in long-term care a, a, a long time, and all of the top producers I have worked with, um, not all, but many, many. And I can tell you, in my previous company, the top five long-term care uh, producers were all uninsurable themselves, right? Um, uh, which is remarkable. They did a great job of saying to people, listen, I screwed up. Uh, I didn't get a plan when I should have. Uh, I would do anything to have this plan I'm showing to you, but I can't because I'm uninsurable. I let my, you know, when my health currency was good, um, you know, it's something I, I didn't act upon. Um, you know, and on the flip side, I hear all the time, uh, especially when I talk to, you know, a lot of the long time uh, long term care producers who bought their long term care insurance, you know, years ago, I hear all the time, hey, man, I, I'm so glad I got this when I did because I would never qualify for this today. So that's a lot of it, is getting people to understand that it's your health currency uh, that buys the policy. And at age, uh, at age 55, the chronic conditions start to emerge, um, and it's much tougher to get. So in, in my mind, I think before age 55 is to get it. And we all know that uh, at age 
60. Right now, we talk about health currency. You also have regular currency, U.S. currency. And at age 60, well, sticker shock starts to emerge. In fact, I can tell you that, um, you know, when, when you're looking at the raw data, raw premium, starting at age 60, when you study these things, you know, with traditional long-term care insurance, um, you can get a $2,500 swing uh, with just middle-of-the-road plan designs with one carrier versus another, which is a, a huge swing. So, you know, when, when age, you know, at age 60, boy, let me tell you, it's a much, much, in my mind, a much tougher sale uh, than uh, in those earlier years when the pricing uh, is, in some cases, reverse sticker shock. Uh, rather than uh, sticker shock. So, you know, why are we waiting? Why do we wait, uh, you know, to the to the very end, uh, you know, later? Why do people wait, you know, uh, you know, considering this old person's insurance? You know, well, like we just talked about, you know, people are having that same, uh, you know, discussion that was established years ago. But I tell you this, if you can go to the next slide, I bet you these people uh, that we all, uh, you know, some of these, uh, you know, celebrity, well-known people uh, that we all know in this country, I bet you they wish they did, uh, you know, didn't wait and uh, hear just a few. And everyone, you know, everyone talks about Michael J. Fox and Christopher Reeve, you know, but, you know, look at, uh, you know, look at, you know, Bruce Willis, for example, or, you know, for those of you that are in the uh, college, college basketball, Pat Summit, coach of uh, uh, University of Tennessee, celebrated coach. My God, uh, Alzheimer's, early onset of Alzheimer's diagnosed at age 59. I mean, you know, these things can happen. Um, you know, if you go to the next slide, here are others. And I think, uh, you know, who the people are marketing people that created this slide, uh, quite sure they just looked up celebrities with Parkinson's or multiple scl sclerosis. So these are just two specific incidents, you know, reasons. Um, but boy, you know what? I don't care how much money these have, uh, these people have. Look at some of these people, especially under the MS category, what age they were diagnosed with MS. And I don't know about you guys, but I also know uh, people that were diagnosed with MS. And um, it's really sad when, you know, they come to me and say, hey, you know, nothing you can do, right? Nothing you can do as far as getting the plan. I didn't see this you know, diagnosis coming, uh, you know, I don't have any family history of it, I never thought it would be something I would have to deal with, uh, although I don't have any symptoms, but there's nothing I need. unfortunately, there's not, no, um, you know, so, um, you know, so that's just a, a sampling of people, and feel free to share that with people, right, I mean, you know, uh, you know, it comes back to an unexpected event, and, you know, being diagnosed with MS certainly uh, is an unexpected event. Um, if we can go to the next slide, you know, uh, where do those people turn, even the celebrities, and where does anyone turn uh, when actual care is needed? And again, right, we all know this, so I'm not going to dwell on this, but when it comes to long-term care, we're on our own. And this is a big, big part of our overall messaging. And in fact, I think it needs to be dealt with, uh, you know, at the very beginning, because most people do think Medicare, you know, or some sort of program, anything but them, anything but their pocket pays for long-term care services. But no, I'm not going to review uh, the specifics, but we all know that Medicaid is the payer of last resort. I like to say, again, say the copay is 100%, then Medicaid kicks in and you do lose uh, some choice. Right, that's our nationwide long-term care plan. No, we're not like Norway or Denmark or Sweden, uh, where we pay you know 85% taxes and there's a program to help. Not in this country. In this country, we're on our own, uh, and it's one of the largest unfunded liabilities we face. Um, uh, if we can go to the next slide, and then the next slide after that, I'm just going to do this. Will take a quick two minutes, and we'll open it up for any questions or comments. But uh, I just wanted to show a quick uh, plan design scenario, and how. And we always get, you know, a lot of people. I'd say our biggest competition uh, when selling any long-term care solution 
is self-funding. So I just want to give a quick, uh, quick example of self-funding versus uh, a uh, uh, a plan, right? A uh, an actual plan uh, for long-term care. In this example, a National Guardian Life traditional long-term care plan of uh, of a husband and wife, the 57-year-old couple, which it, Again, that's a little bit uh, older than I'd like. In fact, if it was, uh, if this couple was age 59, or I'm sorry, 49, if this couple was 49 years old, the combined premium would be $5,500, $5,500 versus almost $6,700 uh, for this age 57 couple. But even at age 57, let's you know see what type of leverage you can get. <laughs> which uh, with a joint policy, a third pool of money uh, here in this example, they each have their own three-year plan with a $200 a day benefit, pools of money of $219,000. Uh, and they also have their uh, sh- shared, benef- uh, shared uh, benefit pool of 219, that's $657,000 uh, available right on, on day one. Uh, with 3% compound inflation. And because it's a joint policy, it also includes uh, uh, a spousal waiver of premium. One spouse needs care, that entire premium is waived. Um, you know, that's a very nice plan and great leveraging, right? So let's go to the next slide and talk about, okay, well, you know what, I'm going to do an analysis and say, all right, well, I'm going to act as my own insurance company. And, you know, we could argue all day about whether that's possible. Is it really are you self-funding? Are you self-insuring? Are you trying to you know, start up your own insurance company? This is kind of both, right? So we see what the insurance strategy is, right? The uh, With that premium, if they paid uh, premiums for uh, 30 years and there were uh, premiums remained level and they, you know, there, no one went on claim, uh, you know, it would be, uh, you, know, you know, 30 years of premiums of $2,640,000. So, I'm sorry, 2000 roughly $200,000 would be the premium outlay over 30 years. So let's say I'm going to start up my own uh, insurance company, and I'm going to take that. Uh, it's going to be the, the, Mike, uh, the, the Mike Simon Stad, that's my name, insurance company, and I'm going to take that premium outlay, and that's going to be my initial claim reserve as well, right? I'm going to take that $200,000, and I'm going to put it in the account in which I'm going to get a uh, guarantee 5% per, pre-tax rate of return, right? Well, let's go to the next uh, slide and take a look, uh, see what the differences are here. Does it make sense to you know, use uh, the insurance carrier uh, and uh, utilize the traditional long-term care plan and the, I'll call it the you know, superior leveraging, which, you know, you could just see what the leveraging is uh, each 10 years here, uh, or should I do, uh, you know, set aside uh, 200,000 myself? Well, after, you know, uh, 30 years uh, in pre-tax, right? Doesn't include taxes taken out at 5%, right? Well, look in year 30, right? Well, what's, uh, you know, what's the difference? Incredibly substantial. If you can go to the next page, you'll see, uh, see the details essentially uh the shortfall from uh you know my self insurance strategy after year 30 is significant $723,000 right <laughs> now you might say oh well hey i uh you know my you know that's 720 and no one if no one needed care well i could you know pass that 723 uh on whatever it is but you know we can go on and on and talk about you know what uh you know, you know if you listen you buy yourself a lifetime of peace of mind right uh if the no, long term care is never needed and i do think there's something to be said for that let's go to the next slide and all right well if i what is the amount needed to match right to match the uh that amount right the the uh the end result the end outcome in year 30 uh if i wanted to uh you know, try to match that. What would I need? I'd need to invest three hundred and sixty-eight thousand, right? Uh, that would also be my initial claim reserve, right? Which you know, arguably may not be adequate if a claim happens again 
uh, if, uh, you know, if a long-term care event happens unexpectedly earlier in life, which we all know uh, can happen. All right, so uh, the next, uh, next slide you will see, again, uh, not much of a shortfall there, but, you know, uh, you know at, at the end of 30 years, but do you really, you know, do you really want to take that $368,000 and start up your own insurance company and, instead of paying manageable insurance premiums that give you superior leveraging uh, on day one? No, I think it's a pretty easy argument. So with that, it uh, looks like we've done about uh, a little less than 45, about 40 minutes. I think we started about seven minutes late, about 40 minutes. Um, I would love to open it up, and if you can go to the next slide, well, it's basically just a thank you, but uh, if you can go to the uh, <coughs> next slide, I will open it up for any questions or comments you may have. Unmute everybody, and this is the opportunity uh, to come in with questions, and again, as we always ask, uh, if you're not going to ask questions, go ahead and use the email suited. We appreciate that. That gives us all of I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I noticed looking at the brochure while we were having the webinar that you offer a 10 pay and a single pay premium, which I think really helps with the uh, the discussion about it going on forever. Is are, are the premiums rated higher? Are the pre excuse me? Are the premiums higher for that sort of a payment plan? Yeah, so of course, you know, if one was doing a, uh, you know, a 10 pay, uh, which we do offer, um, uh, yes, uh, a 10 pay, the premiums would be higher, uh, but they're also guaranteed. Um, so uh, uh, with the exception, I'm, sh I'm sorry, in most states, they're guaranteed with the exception of California. So in all other states, those 10 pay premiums, yes, of course, they're going to be higher because you're getting it all done um, uh, within 10 years, uh, but they are guaranteed, which is nice. And yes, that is correct. We also have a single pay option. So for, so for those people that uh, you know have money just to get it done in one shot, or perhaps they have a, uh, you know, a 10, 1035 exchange opportunity, which uh, we see a lot of, that could be a way to, get great long-term care leverage. Good question, good answer. Uh, important to note with this, okay, the, the 10 pay opportunities, you, you gotta come to terms with the fact, which is why we're having these kinds of conversations. It's why the, I did the webinar two weeks ago about the new chapter of long-term care, okay? Uh, and the important thing to note is that those kinds of situations with the 10 pay, for example, that's a unicorn. That's going to be something that you might have happen twice in your career. Okay. What we're having to do by, uh, as a result of a variety of different forces is look to people for whom the premium isn't going to be, you know, $6,000. We're trying to figure out ways to get in front of these younger, healthier people and configure long-term care we're looking at throwing inflation overboard we're looking at throwing a lot of the other riders that have been sort of stalwarts of the industry for a long time we're looking at those things going overboard because it's the only way we can make this affordable for the clients and the bottom line is you end up in a situation where they buy some now and they buy more later if they need it later but the most important thing is to get something now when they're younger and when they're healthy because you're going to have to trust me when I tell you this, there's no feeling in a world that's worse than seeing someone that you know who has had a health setback and who is walking with a cane or who is in a wheelchair as a result of that health setback. Because in our business, you know that that also means there's a strong likelihood that those folks are not eligible to get long-term care and statistically we know that unless you interacted with them and solved the problem that they didn't do anything uh, to get long-term care so I, I talked about it before you need to position yourself that you are initiating conversations with the folks that you know they're going to be less 
surprised that you asked to talk with them about this and you asked to you offered to help protect their retirement plan and let's be honest that's what long-term care does they're going to be less surprised that you do that than they are surprised that you're in the insurance business and you haven't made any attempt to step in and try to assist them so it involves a significant reset um, in the orientation significant reset in the approach so uh, step off my soapbox here. Anybody else with questions? Uh, and again, uh, we didn't get some of the intro stuff that we normally do did because we were dealing with this, uh, the technical problem and <clears throat> kudos to Courtney for figuring out a way uh, to work around the workaround uh, and the workaround to get Mike on the, on the call and able to talk with you. But we will, rec we have recorded this. We will be processing that and making it available. It'll be posted on our website later today. I had a question before about access to the PowerPoint. Uh, we will make access to the PowerPoint available to agents who are appointed with us. We will tackle the appointment process questions and such when we do our follow-up calls, and those will be later on this afternoon. So any other questions out there? Okay. Hey, well, yeah, Mike, th this, is, this is Mike. I just wanted to, uh, you know, give a big thumbs up to what you just said right there uh because that's what it's, it is absolutely heartbreaking and brutal uh when there's someone you know uh whether it's a client or friend of yours who uh like you said is uh you know has some sort of health challenge yet uh and you know that you know they don't have a plan and what what i've seen is a lot of and it depends how well you know someone but i've seen a lot of uh top long-term care producers go out there and say hey listen i require everyone i know before they turn age 45 or before they turn age 50 whatever it is i require them to have a long-term care discussion uh about me i'm not you know i'm not pushing a product i'm just having a discussion in which we talk about health currency and how important it is to have a long-term care plan so that's i uh, just thought i'd add that it's a great thought. I know agents uh, who use waivers in those situations. They have a conversation with somebody about this this concept, if you will. Uh, if the people elect to go a different way or they elect to self-fund or whatever uh, fallacy they have in their minds about how they're going to handle this, uh, the agents require that the waiver be signed because th there is some mm -hmm. exposure there uh, when you're having this conversation. If people say no and then they come back later on because something um, something goes wrong for them. So, but the the biggest thing is sit down this week, Saturday morning, with a cup of coffee. If you're married, your spouse or partner, make a list of everybody you know, everybody they know, and their spouses and partners, and that's where you start the conversation. Don't wait for leads, because the people that are coming to you vis-a-vis -vis leads with their they got their hair on fire. It's because they just found out that they've got some kind of a health problem. And that health problem, there's a 99% chance it's going to DQ them for this. If you're talking to the people that you know, uh, and maybe you're even talking to their kids, they're younger, they're healthier, but most important, and, and that's the, the single most important part. Mike talked about um, health currency earlier. That is actually, um, that's the key to the kingdom right there, because if you don't have that health currency lined up, if, you, if they're not in a position where they can qualify medically, it does not matter how much money they have. They're not going to be well positioned to solve this. So, all right. Well, Mike, I want to thank you, uh, number one, for your persist persistence in hanging in there while we uh, got underneath the hood and got the technical issue solved. Still don't know what it was, but we figured out um, a way to get around yeah. it. Appreciate everyone that was yeah. with us today. Um, being patient while we worked through that, we will, as always, be doing some follow-up calls uh, later today. Uh, the marketing team, uh, Kanisha and Deborah, Derek and Don, and myself, we will all be following up with you uh, to answer questions. We'll give you the opportunity uh, to get contracted with National Guardian Life and the rest of our lineup of long-term care solutions so that you have all of those weapons at your choice. And uh, we'll take care of that. We'll get everything lined up for you and uh, get you moving forward. So, Mike, I'm going to let you go. 
let everybody else go. We're going to shut things down. Courtney will process it, get it posted on our website, and we'll have it up there probably later today so you can get on the website and uh, download it. So thanks to everybody. Appreciate you making your time available and have a great day. Take care.